Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a very hard to find London Toy number 13 oil tanker. I got this from a friend of the channel named Adam who lives in the UK. He's got quite an eclectic collection of old die casts and knowing this one was of Canadian vintage he asked if he could send it to me. Yes please. Let's read the letter. It says, Dear Andrew, I hope you enjoy this small piece of Canadian diecast history. It's very crude and basic, but that's what also makes it beautiful in a way. It is a gift and there are no strings attached. It's entirely up to you what you do with it. Having said that, I hope you won't resist restoring it or making it your own in the way only you can imagine. Please note that the wheels were made of paper which could be an interesting challenge for you to work on unless you replace them. Good luck and have fun. Adam from Adam's Genius Garage. Well, here are the paper wheels in question. I've never seen that before, have you? They've been waterlogged. They're almost like leather now. A couple of them are jammed up. But it's, it's not rolling at all, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to save these. But I'll go to work on it. It's my entry into the Diecast International Builders We Miss You OPA build off. OPA is a well loved member in our hobby community who's been in the hospital and is still recovering from cancer related surgery. He's been away from the hobby bench for most of this year, and we just want to say we miss you and we know you can beat this scourge of a disease. The guidelines for this build-off were to use a Tootsie toy or a Midge toy, which Opa specializes in. I may have just DQ'd myself, but I thought he'd get a kick out of this Canadian version of the Tootsie toy. Hope you guys are okay with that too. A little exposure to one of the lesser known die-cast companies. Well, I'm going to work on removing these paper wheels, much like Conan the Barbarian trying to fillet a tuna fish. With my X-Acto knife, the inevitable happened, and <laughs> I sprung a leak. So now the four wheels and my left index finger are in several pieces. But there's another YouTube channel I want you to check out. No bandages are required to visit Ghetto Diecast Customs. Miguel is new on the scene, as you can see, with 31 subscribers, and I'm inviting you to follow the link in the description. And let's pump up those numbers for Miguel, who's having a good start to his new channel. Here's the stamp on the inside of the oil tanker where you will see London Toy and Made in Canada. You'd think London Toy referred to London, England, but it doesn't. The plant was in London, Ontario, Canada, about halfway between Toronto and Detroit. How Adam got this in the UK, we'll never know. I'm just thankful that he's so generous and willingly passed it along to me. Thanks again, Adam. I sized the wheels at 15 millimeters, as you saw, and now I'm stripping the paint down. I read with a little bit of online research that this was only issued in the color red, but I don't see any vestiges of red paint on here, just the blue. No matter, it comes off quite easily with only a few stubborn spots left here, which are easily cleaned up with the wire brush attachment on my Dremel tool. And underneath all of this, it proves to be a very true casting. Testament to the Canadian quality that it was made with. But I still give it all the attention I normally do in the bare metal detail before we take it to the important primer and paint stages. Shortly before World War II, in January 1939, the London Toy Company was registered as Webster Manufacturing Limited. They made air compressors and spray painting equipment, air pumps for jeeps during the war, and it's not known when toy production started, but it's thought to have occurred as a means of using waste and rejected metal rather than transporting it to be repurified. The Webster Brothers factory closed in 1950. In 1951, Archie Palmer, a former company salesman, purchased the London toy name and the molds and continued production of toys with the man who bought the factory and the machinery. 
It's believed that Archie Palmer eventually sold his molds and the London toy name to an Australian company. And although it's only speculation, the New Zealand and Australian releases of Brentware and Brent Toy toys show a remarkable similarity to the London toy releases. I only had to do one little flaw fix-up on the back end of the tanker. Those are often revealed after the primer stage. And here I'm putting a couple of coats of Vallejo bright red on it to return it to what I understand was the original color. It looks fantastic already. And I let it cure overnight in my homemade UV light box. Only one single decal goes on this one for simplicity purposes. We were allowed to incorporate a German theme in this build because that's Opus Heritage and Liquamali is an oil company that I'm familiar with here in Switzerland, next door to Germany. I'm going to paint the tank valve covers in gold to match that Liquamali logo that I just applied. Everything is looking glistening beautiful at this point. I decanted some chrome paint out of one of my Molotow pens. I find it a little bit easier and more accurate to apply it with a fine detail brush than right out of the pen which sometimes gushes on me and leaves a big blotch exactly where I don't want a big blotch of chrome to be. And that's all the detail required on this save for my YouTube channel logo which goes inside like so. Well, I had to come up with a solution for the paper wheels that I removed that were all waterlogged and not rolling. So I 3D printed a set of these. Look at the beautiful detail. It was primered and now it's painted. And they're 15 millimeter in size as I had measured the old ones to be. And now I simply need to thread the original axle through the holding pins into the wheels and get them properly seated like they were originally. And you can see there's lots of freedom of movement in there. And of course I repeated it on the back axle. Let's have a closer look at the finished oil tanker in beautiful red with chrome details on the front. New 3D printed wheels, which puts it back into rolling condition, the valve covers, in a metal flake gold and a single German brand Liqua Molly oil company decal on the back. There was no glass, there's no interior on a London toy, but I think you'll agree that this one has now been transformed from a 72 year old model into a brand new looking tanker again. I'm very happy with how this one turned out. I hope you enjoyed watching this. And Opa, we all wish you a speedy and a full recovery. Our thoughts, our prayers are with you, my friend, and I know you'll be back soon. I hope everyone watching enjoyed this video, and then you'll come back soon and often. It's coffee time.